Hi, this is Scott Brown with another MotorAge Automotive Maintenance and Service Tech Tips video brought to you by BPro Auto. Next level aftermarket parts that are approved by Mopar and built to fit most makes and models. Now in this video, we'll be covering in-tank electric fuel pumps, their evolution, and to share several troubleshooting tech tips and best practices service professionals can use when troubleshooting fuel delivery problems. Whether you're a seasoned pro or new to the field, these tech tips and techniques can help you ensure reliable and efficient service for your customers. Now today's fuel supply systems have become quite complex and one of the primary reasons is that the fuel pump is a power consumer. And by introducing fuel pump control modules and now three-phase AC or otherwise known as brushless DC motors or BLDC fuel pumps, engineers have been able to leverage the technology to make the vehicle more efficient. In the distant past, fuel delivery systems were focused on supplying a constant feed of cool fuel to the fuel rail and return more than 50% of it back to the fuel tank. This methodology was aimed at providing a constant supply of fuel at the proper pressure and volume needed to properly support the vehicle from idle all the way up through high load through power enrichment. Fuel pump delivery systems are designed initially to support the power output of the vehicle's power plant. For example, a small four-cylinder engine, naturally aspirated, will typically have a much smaller demand of fuel than a fuel system found in a V6 turbocharged application. In essence, the more powerful the engine, the larger the fuel pump. Today's fuel delivery systems no longer return fuel back to the fuel tank, and this was done to reduce vapor emissions created by returning heated fuel to the fuel tank. This is where electronic control over fuel pump operation surfaced. Since mechanical regulations by means of a fuel pressure regulator mounted on the fuel rail had been eliminated. With this came along additional elements needed for proper electronic regulations. And one of these elements has been a bonus for technicians because we now have a fuel pressure sensor on the low pressure supply system that we can use when analyzing vehicle performance issues. Additionally, the fuel pump module is typically tasked with providing clues to support a diagnosis. For example, the fuel pump control module can detect conditions such as high or low voltage, power consumption, and when used in conjunction with a pressure sensor, Additional fuel pump performance routines can be performed to help support diagnosis. DTCs such as a P0627, 628, and 629 are helpful for non-BLDC equipped vehicles. And PO25A through 25D and P2635 can be used to gain additional insight on BLDC equipped vehicles. As you can see, these added diagnostic codes can definitely help a technician arrive at a proper diagnosis. For a crank no start condition, it's best to know which type of pump the vehicle is equipped with because a BLDC pump or a brushless DC pump cannot be checked for audible noise. These pumps operate very, very quietly. But one of the tests I like to perform dates back to the beginning of EFI and that is an audible test. And usually the pump will be commanded on just for a couple of seconds at key up. And if the vehicle is in a very quiet location, one can usually perform this check themselves. But if the vehicle is in a very noisy environment, you may need to have an assistant come and help you with this. And what I like to do is just move out to the tank or even take the fuel cap off and have an associate flip the key on and listen for a noise. You should know what a good pump sounds like. And if you're unfamiliar with this sound, just compare it to a known good vehicle. Now for the same brush pump, if you don't hear the pump running, the next step in my book is have a look at a wiring diagram. Now I know that some of you may be here asking, hey, why aren't you connecting a scan tool to the vehicle? Well, at this point, I'm going by experience, and in most cases, this method has been very successful. Now here I have a vintage 2001 domestic truck and looking at the wiring diagram, this is one of the classic circuits. Okay, this is a pretty typical circuit here. We have a fuel pump drive high coming from the powertrain control module. 
that drives one side of the coil in the fuel pump relay and the other side here goes right to ground. And then on the other side, the power consumption side, we have a fuse, uh, hot at all times, and then across that relay switch context that feeds the fuel pump. Fuel pump power on one side and then the other side goes right to ground. So when diagnosing such a system, uh, we, know, we need to know two things. If the pump isn't working, is it being told to be turned on from the engine controller? And then two, do we have a complete circuit back to the pump itself? And do we have power to provide current flow across that complete circuit? Now, one of the tools I really love to use is the U-Activate. And this tool, basically, it installs in place of the relay and allows us to perform some analysis on that circuit, both the control side of the circuit and the power consumption side, okay? And what this does is it, it breaks up the circuit. It will allow us to mo quickly monitor the control side through an LED, which we'll demonstrate here in a second. And then we can also verify our circuit back to the pump, and we'll walk through these uh, tests here in just a second. Now, have you ever had a vehicle towed in for a crank no start? and the vehicle started and ran fine when you went to address it. Now, if it's a vehicle with a brush pump, it's very possible that the pump condition may have cleared if the no start was caused by an electrical connectivity issue such as high resistance in one of the brush connections. See, the commutator bar and brushes are designed to wear over time, and I've seen many cases where one or more segments of the bars on the commutator have had high resistance. Now, if the pump motor rotates and stops right on one of those high resistance areas, the vehicle may experience a no start. After the vehicle has been taken on a ride on a tow truck, the movement of the vehicle may be just enough to slightly reduce the resistance and enable the fuel pump to start again. I have personally seen this condition happen many times in my career. Now, one of the tests that can be useful for the technician to gain perspective in this condition is to use a current probe and an oscilloscope to have a look at the motor dynamics. So all we need to do is install the U-Activate. Okay, here we are, we're under the hood here, and this is our power distribution center. We can see there's our fuel pump relay. We've removed our fuel pump relay, and we've installed our test adapter, okay? And then one of the first tests you can do is you can do this LED test here. We'll turn that on. You can see it turns red. That means that we've got proper power at 30. We've got a complete circuit back through the tank, okay? If you turn this on and found that the light did not light, the next thing you would do is just plug in. There's a four millimeter banana jack. You plug your voltmeter in here to ground. Make sure you have power there. If you don't have power, go and troubleshoot. If you have power, you can come back here, then you can just turn on this, the speaker, and I would go back to the, to the tank, I would start tapping, wiggling connectors to see if you can get any response out of this. If you can't get any response, then you probably have a big open, you're gonna need to go break the circuit down further, go to the back of the tank or get to the tank connector, and then do your circuit checks from there. Uh, the next check, you would do, you're gonna turn the key on and we're gonna look for a two seconds, two seconds of operation uh, through this LED, okay? So we'll let that set. We should see that light turn on for two seconds when we put the key in. And it goes out, okay. So just as predicted, that tells us that the Fuel pump control circuit is intact and it's turning the, uh, attempting to turn the, the relay on, okay? And then the next test you can do is we've got this loop here, the, the current loop, and we're gonna use our current probe and our, our oscilloscope. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure the scope is set up. It's set up, it's running. Uh, we've got a trigger set. And then we're just gonna hit our switch here. Turn that on. We can actually hear the pump run. It's a good chance to take a listen to that pump. And we'll turn that off. And then we can look at our scope pattern. So I've already got this cursor here measuring. We're looking at about 19 amps on our stall current. And then the red trace is our voltage. So we can see the voltage is actually 
um, being sent to the fuel pump uh, module itself. This is a good pump, pump is working fine. Uh, so the stall current, you see we've got good stall current that is typically indicative of a good healthy electrical circuit. And then our power supply, we're at 11.68 volts there. You can see that it actually lo gets loaded down here, down a little bit as the pump really draws a lot of amperage. And then as the amperage starts to normalize, we can move this uh, cursor up here. The average there is about six and a half amps or so, okay? So one of the areas that I like to look at here is all of the pushes here on the current. You can see that they're all uniform. That indicates a nice, healthy pump. Now, in cases where you've got a, an intermittent no start and where it might be caused by a uh, fuel pump with high resistance on one or more of the commutator bars, you're going to see a huge gap here or a, a decrease, a significant decrease in amperage. All right, here's a, an actual case where we had a, a, a Mazda. This is a, a 2012 Mazda 3. Had a lot of miles on it. It had been bouncing around from shop to shop trying to solve an intermittent crank no start. And when we listened to his story and uh, the conditions, um, we decided to check a, a number of things. And, and one of them was uh, check doing a current probe check on the fuel pump. And you can actually see the pump. Uh, you see these normal pushes here, and then you see a low one, okay? And the low one repeats, okay? and we went ahead and sold a pump based off of this information. We told the customer we could not duplicate the complaint, but we have solid evidence that there's likely a scenario where that pump is stopping right on that uh, commutator, and that's when the no-start is uh, servicing. So I can say that we, we did put a new pump in it, and um, you know, six months later we did hear back from the customer, and he said that the vehicle has, uh, hasn't failed to start for him, so this was a success. Now, when it comes to the three-phase pump, your scan tool and DVOM are going to be your best weapons for primarily analyzing the faults. And this is a three-phase pump from a late model vehicle. And as you can see, we have four conductors. Three are controlling the fuel pump through the delta wound stator, and the other is a ground that serves two purposes. One is so that the fuel pump control module has a reference so that the module can monitor motor performance such as phase imbalance, which can lead to unwanted NVH, and also deliver valuable diagnostic information to the technician. And the second, a protection circuit in case of a short. So when you're faced with a fuel pump problem on a BLDC system, you'll start with your scan tool to collect as much information as possible along with your service information system. But one thing is clear, with any module troubleshooting, you'll need to verify proper module power and ground circuits. Now, analyzing the wiring diagrams for connection points and their locations to help you locate the source of trouble. Wiring diagrams and connector IDs are a good test point. Another test that might be useful in verifying the motor imbalance within the pump is to use a milliometer with Kelvin probes. This type of meter can check winding resistance with extreme accuracy. And one of the testers I have is the Pico Technology MT-03A, which uses a PC-based application to perform this test. Okay, we've taken a look at the wiring diagram here, and we've seen we've got uh, U, V, and W here are pins one, two, and five at the fuel pump control module. So you've got your color identified as well. So you would unplug this connector and then insert your test probes into each of these so that you can connect your Kelvin clips. So we're here now at the pump and I've basically unplugged the pump connector from the adapter here at the top. And I've got three test uh, adapters here and so we're going to take our our terminals u v and w our probes and i'm just going to connect them accordingly okay u v and then w and make sure none of these are touching each other okay let's go in between and i'm going to support this up here like so 
Okay. And we'll disconnect this guy. Let's make sure we're not touching anything. Okay. All right. And so now we're going to go to the milliohm tester here. And we're going to go to the electric motor test. It's going to connect to our device. Okay. It's giving us a warning. And then we've also got our temperature compensation probe right here. So you would place it somewhere near the tank, you know, just to give you a, a point of reference. And then we'll go ahead and hit the start test button. And it's going to quickly do a test through U and V. And it's also going to reverse that current the other way to give us a, an accurate reading. And what we're really looking for here is a balance. This should be all very closely balanced. And that's the key for smooth pump operation. You can see that this is a brand new pump. Our percent maximum deviation is 0.3%. Our maximum deviation is 1.1 milliohm. And uh, so that's what you would typically expect out of a out of a new pump but you can see how quick that test was performed and gave you some really good uh, information here we can see in the top of this pump here you see how many connectors we've got we're supporting a fuel tank sending unit uh, and also the pump and there's a uh, there's a shield ground as well in there now, when it comes to replacement parts, I always try to use the best quality available. And when it comes to a fuel pump service, of course, the last thing you want to do is do that job again under warranty. And this is why BPRO Auto Parts are a good choice, since you're putting the OEM spec balanced part back into the vehicle and back into service. Well, that's all I have for now, and I hope you found this video both helpful and informative. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.